If you look at the Swift UI preview window here on the right, you'll see our standard iOS picker interface, a spinning wheel of options. By default, it'll show the first option, this thing here, cash. That's because it reads a value of payment type, which we set here to be zero, which is cash, so cash is selected. However, when the user moves the wheel, their selection changes. They might select payment type one, credit card, or two, iodine points, instead of zero, cash. So this picker doesn't just read the value of payment type, it also writes the value. This is what's called a two-way binding, because any changes to the value of payment type will update the picker, and any changes to the picker will update payment type. This is where the dollar sign comes in for dollar payment type. Swift property wrappers use that to provide two-way bindings to their data. So when we say dollar payment type, Swift UI will write the value using the property wrapper, which in turn will stash it away and cause the UI to refresh automatically. Now at first, all these at signs here and here and uh, dollar signs and so forth may seem a bit unswifty. And it's true that we're not used to working in this way. However, they allow us to get features that would otherwise require a lot of hassle. You know, without at state up here, we wouldn't be able to change properties in our structs because structs are fixed values. Without environment objects, we wouldn't be able to receive shared data from elsewhere in our app. Without observable object, we wouldn't be told when an external value changes. And without dollar properties, like dollar payment type here, two-way bindings would have to be updated by hand. Anyway, that's our basic pick complete. So if we return to order view again, over here, order view, we're currently saying this thing should push to a text of checkout. I'll replace that with destination, our checkout view, like that. And now let's run the app again. I press Command R to build and run. I'll choose a fresh baked croissant, press order this, go to our order menu and press place order. And there's our UI. It doesn't look great. You now this wheel picker just doesn't fit in very well here. And that's despite us putting in quite a lot of work just to get this far. Well, we're gonna make one change in checkout view. In fact, we're gonna change just one word, this one here. We're gonna change our VStack to form like that. And that's all we'll change and press Command R and see if you can spot the difference. So I'll choose a fresh baked croissant again, press order this, go to our order screen and press place order. And now the wheel's gone. Instead we see how do you want to pay with cash chosen here. And when that's pressed, a new screen slides in with the other options and cash is checked. I'll choose credit card. We go back and now credit cards chosen instead. This is the power of Swift UI's declarative approach to UI. We say what behavior we want rather than the precise styling of it, and Swift UI will automatically adapt it according to the context where it's used. Let's continue on with our form by adding two more components. One that lets users select whether they've had an iDyne loyalty card or not, and one that lets them enter their card number. Both of these need two-way bindings just like our picker. So let's start with two more at state properties. I'll say at state private var add loyalty details is false. And then at state private var loyalty number is an empty string like that. Now we can add controls to our form to represent those. Let's hide this left hand bar here. We're gonna add some more after this picker inside our first section. We'll add a toggle, which is the equivalent of a UI switch, and a text field, which is the equivalent of a UI text field. So let's add those inside our existing form section. I'll say there is a toggle, and it is on properties decided by dollar add loyalty details. Inside there, I'll add some text saying add iodine loyalty card. Boom. And that text is used as a prompt for the toggle, which is great for accessibility reasons. Below the toggle, I'll say there is a text field with the prompt, enter your iDyne ID. And its text is bound to the value of 
our loyalty number property using two-way binding. So there's not a lot of code there, but it's worth us clarifying what's going on. Both these things, our toggle and our text field, have two-way bindings with these dollar signs here, linking up to those at state properties we made earlier, add loyalty details and loyalty number. This toggle has some text inside it to serve as a prompt, and this text field has some placeholder text that will disappear when you just type into it. Now before you run the app, there's another change I'd like to talk about first. This text field here we just added, should it always be there or only when this toggle switch is enabled? Now we bound toggle to the value of add loyalty details, which means when the user flicks it on or off, that boolean gets set to true or false. It'd be great if that text was visible only when the toggle was on. Well, it turns out that's pretty easy to do. We can just wrap our text field in a condition. We can say if add loyalty details and push it in there and we're done. And now the text will only be shown when that boolean is true. So if you run the program now, we should see a change in the state of the toggle shows or hides that text field. So I'll go ahead and choose maple French toast, press order this, go to the order screen, place order. There's no text field when I flick the switch, boom, it appears and goes away again like that. Really, really nice. I think it's through which it all makes sense. This toggle has a two-way binding to add loyalty details. That means when it's changed, the property updates. That property is marked up here with at state. When any at state or at environment object changes its value, Swift UI will reinvoke the body property here. And that will in turn read the property here and decide whether add loyalty details is true or false and show the text field appropriately. For an improved effect, we can actually modify this binding so it animates any changes it causes just by saying add loyalty details and adding after it dot animation like that. Boom. And now if you run the code again, we should see it looking much, much nicer. So I'll go to the order and choose place order. I'll check it on. Boom, it slides in super smoothly. Much, much better. Let's try another common control, segmented controls. This is actually just done with a picker with a modifier, so it works in exactly the same way. We give it a two-way binding that stores the selection index, then use a for each loop over an array to create some options to choose from. For this screen, we can use segmented control to represent various tip percentages the user can select from. So, in our code, I'll go up here and say an array of options. Static, let tip amounts be an array of 10, 15, 20, 25, or zero, like that. Now we can add a property to store a selected segment. I'll say at state private var tip amount equals one. So it defaults to 15%. I'll put this into a new section in our form. So let us add a title that makes the whole UI clearer. So after our first section ends down here, I'll say there is a new section with a header of some text saying add a tip question mark. And inside there, I'll make our picker. So I'll say there's a picker using percentage. Uh, and I'll bind the selection of this thing to our tip amount property using two way binding dollar tip amount. Inside there, I'll say there is a uh, for each counting from zero up to less than self dot tip amounts dot count. So there I'll say there is some text and I use string interpolation to say self dot tip amounts dollar zero percent like that. So let's say uh, what we have 10, 15, 20, 25 or zero percent. Then after the picker, importantly, I'll say dot picker style is segmented picker style like that to get segmented control rather than a wheel picker or something else. We're going to add one more component to our form, which is a button to actually confirm the order. We'll come back to its exact functionality in just a moment because there are other things we have to look at first. So here's the final section for our table. It's a section using the header. I'll say text uh, total is 100 bucks, which I know is wrong, but it's good enough for now. Inside there is a button saying confirm order. 
and we will place the order when that thing is tapped. Yes, this value is wrong. That's okay. We'll just go ahead and run the app for now. So I'll add Power Muesli and press order this. In our order screen here, I'll choose place order. And now you can see we have our picker here at the top, our toggle, so again, hiding those things. Uh, plus an add a tip, uh, segmented control line here, which animates nicely like that. Plus our confirm order at the bottom. Now it's interesting that this confirm order button looks different than a regular button. This thing is now having blue text left aligned, and when we tap this thing, it actually flashes gray, just like you'd expect in a UI kit table like this. This is another example of the way SwiftUI's form system changes the design and behavior of components inside it automatically.